Steve Coffin here. Um, you know, there are two questions that I receive very often. One is, what do you think of studying more than one language at the same time? And the second one is, how long does it take to learn a language? Uh, insofar as the first one is concerned, I think it's a matter of personal preference. I cannot study more than one language at a time because it's such a tremendous commitment, almost emotionally, that I can't see myself doing it for two languages. I can dabble, I can refresh languages that I already know, but in terms of taking on a language, a new language, for me it's a total commitment. Other people study three or four languages, so it's entirely a matter of, of what your preferences are and, and how much time you have. So that's the first one. I think there is no simple answer, it's what you like to do. The other big question is, how long does it take to learn a language? Um, you know, it reminds me of when I was in high school once, uh, we had had a history exam or a history test and the teacher was very angry because it would it had been very poorly done and the teacher came into the classroom and and read some of the very poor answers that he had received on this exam and one of the questions was when was the paleolithic era and somebody had answered a long long time ago well the same is the answer to how long does it take to learn a language it takes a long time it takes a long time uh, and so that's why it's so important that two things really one that the process be enjoyable and the second one is that the process be efficient so it takes a long time it's not three weeks it's not three months it's longer than that uh, in most cases uh, so I looked up what the FSI the US Foreign Service uh, Institute uh, says and they say that for languages that are close to English I'm assuming you're starting from English, but the idea is a language that's similar to your own. They suggest 600 hours of class time, classroom time. Uh, some of the more difficult languages like German, which have cases and messy things like that, they suggest 900 hours. For the Slavic languages, amongst others, they suggest 1,100 hours. And for Asian languages, they suggest over 2,000 hours of classroom time. Classroom time, personally, um, I don't look at it in terms of classroom time. I look at it in terms of time that you spend with the language. Because whether you're sitting in a classroom or reading in the language or listening to the language or studying in a book, it's the same. It's time that you're spending with the language. In many cases, the time you spend away from the class is more effective, more efficient than you time the time you spend in the class. Not necessarily, but very often. So it's a matter of how many hours do you need. So if I look at my own case, um, oh, and the other issue is, of course, what do you mean by learn a language? So I think my goal in learning a language is to get to a level where sort of I'm now, you know, I've reached a plateau where I can enjoy it. I can enjoy reading. Although there's words that I don't understand and I can understand most of what I hear on the radio. I can enjoy a movie. I can go to a converse, get involved in a conversation, stumble a bit, make some mistakes, but essentially communicate. I'm now at a level where I can enjoy the language and continue to improve. Uh, that's where I am in my Russian. Uh, I think I reached that level after about three years or so, and now I've just been continuing to enjoy the language, listen to things, read things, speak to people, and gradually improve. Uh, I think that with my Czech, it will take me a year to reach that level. I've been at it for six months and now I've, I can read you know, quite a lot. I'm, I'm quite surprised at how quickly it's gone. Uh, and uh, you know, I've discovered some delightful things to listen to where there are transcripts. Uh, I've mentioned before this uh, Tolki, Chesky, Minulosti, uh, extremely well done, which I, I, there's 800 uh, items in this collection. I'm gonna be enjoying that for quite a while. So within a year I should be there. So if we convert years to hours, like let's say that you have a, an hour and a half a day to spend. So let's just call that 500 hours a year, roughly. So again, roughly on the FSI basis, a, a language that's reasonably close to our own should take us a year to reach that comfort level where we can converse with difficulty, can read, can listen, and can grow in the language. Uh, you know, the German, uh, you know, somewhat more difficult languages, I can't remember what they had on the list, Swahili or something, 
it's they said 900 hours so maybe it's a year and a half maybe it's a year and three quarters that's required uh, assuming that you're going to spend a, an hour and a half a day or 500 hours a year roughly and so therefore the really difficult language well slavic languages it might be two and a half years uh, which is kind of where i was i think and um the uh you know the asian languages would be 2000 hours so it might be a total of four years on that basis uh, when I did Chinese, I was going five hours a day, six, I don't know how many hours I was going full time. And uh, so, you know, if I spent just again, if it's 300, if it's 300 uh, days or 300, however many days, a good part of, of a year, 350 uh, times five hours a day, maybe. I mean, I think I spent 2000 hours uh, one way or another. And I've, of course, I've, I've worked at it since. So I think that's kind of the, the sense. In other words, I think you should try to spend an hour and a half a day. If you spend an hour and a half a day, that's 500 hours roughly uh, a year. This is all very rough. So on that basis, you, a language that's similar to your own, like if you're learning Spanish as an English speaker, within a year, you should be at a comfortable level. Uh, in German, maybe a year and a half. In Russian or Czech, two and a half years. And uh, for an Asian language, maybe four years on the basis of spending an hour and a half a day. If you can spend three hours a day, then you can reduce that in half. So that's roughly uh, the time that it takes. So that's a long time. I mean, even the quickest language is gonna be a year. Now, if you know Spanish, obviously you're gonna learn Portuguese or Italian much more quickly because they're even closer. So one year might be six months, might be three months. If you are living in the country, then it's no longer an hour and a half a day because in fact, you're surrounded by the language. So it's always a matter of the number of hours that you have with the language. So I'm basing it on, you're not living where the language is spoken. You have an hour and a half a day. On the basis of an hour and a half a day, as I say, reasonably close languages, a year, more difficult languages, year and a half to two years, very difficult languages, four years. Now, one year is a long time. And I should remind you that I said that you didn't achieve perfection. You're not at C1 speaking flawless, uh, uh, whatever language, you're not, uh, uh, there are still words you don't know, there's still things you don't understand, but you're at a level where you are operating comfortably uh, and therefore you can continue to improve. So in fact, your target is to get to the comfort level after one year, but then you may have to spend another year uh, continuing to improve it and to enjoy it. Uh, you know, and this was my case with, with Russian, I spent, I mean, it's now been five years, uh, but I kind of hit that level, I think, after three, and I've continued to enjoy it. And, uh, and of course, when I went to Russia for two weeks where I had intensive exposure, I, I really improved. So, you know, if you, once you hit that level, of course, you've got to do more talking to really, you know, develop that fluency. But whether it's one year, two years, or four years, that's a relatively long period of time. Uh, it gets back to my first point about doing more than one language at a time. Uh, you know, one and a half hours a day, if you split that into two languages, now it's going to be twice as long to get there, in my opinion. Uh, so, uh, and so one year, you know, and then continuing to work at the language, two years, it's a major commitment. So it's important that we enjoy what we're doing. So we got to do things that we enjoy. Like I'm just in seventh heaven having discovered this Czech series because I know I'm going to enjoy it. I just love listening to it. It's so well done. Uh, when I get beyond that, when I improve my vocabulary, then I might be able to read novels. I find it still very difficult to read novels. There's just too many words that I don't know. Um, so it's important to enjoy it and it's important to be efficient. So, I mean, you've heard me long enough to know uh, what I think is efficient. What I think is efficient is to focus a lot of your time on, on listening and reading because you can do it while you're doing other stuff. Listening, reading is, is easy to do. It's a great place to to acquire vocabulary and to, to notice things. If you do things that help you notice, like underline or, or highlight things or save words and phrases in link or review your free phrases, uh, these are all efficient things to do. Uh, grammar review as an adjunct to this kind of top-down, big picture learning is efficient. If the grammar learning becomes the major goal, then I think you introduce some inefficiencies because you're spending too much time, not with the language per se, not exposing yourself to the language, but trying to study the bits and pieces. 
and I think that will delay your learning and and might introduce some level of, of frustration but other people may have a, you know may have a different perspective but whatever it is do something that's efficient and do something that's enjoyable and be ready for a long haul uh, so that's uh, my best take on how long it takes to learn a language I look forward to your comments thank you